After the surprise success of the original Super Smash Bros., How Laboratory got to work developing a sequel for the upcoming Nintendo GameCube. Not only would it become the system's best-selling game, but also arguably the most popular title in the Super Smash Bros. series. Of course, I am talking about Super Smash Bros. Melee. Launching shortly after the GameCube, Melee was a pivotal release for the system, but did it manage to improve upon its predecessor? While the controls are much the same, the gameplay is much faster in Melee than it was on the N64, and this gives the game a better pace. Overall, the game just feels a lot smoother than its predecessor, or its sequel for that matter. I think director Masahiro Sakurai said it best, describing Melee as the sharpest game in the series. It just felt really good to play. While the basic feel of the game was improved, Melee also had a few new tricks up its sleeve. Side B moves were added, along with the ability to charge up smash attacks, and the player can now throw their opponents in up to four directions. A number of defensive abilities, such as air dodges and grab escapes, have also been included. Honestly, we could talk about changes and additions for hours, especially as most of the old characters are rebalanced and feature new moves. Speaking of characters, Melee more than doubled the roster from the 12 of the N64 game to a total of 26, 14 of those being brand new characters. While newcomers like Marth, Mewtwo and Zelda are unique additions and great fun to use, there are a few too many clone characters for my liking, such as Falco, Dr. Mario and Pichu. Still, it's only a small issue. For the most part, the characters are varied, original, and a ton of fun to use. If you enjoy Nintendo games, there's a character for you in Melee. The stage count was also significantly increased, meaning a whopping total of 29 locations in which to battle. While a handful of stages returned from the N64 original, almost all of these were brand new and featured different dynamics which can change up the battlefield. Take Brinstar Depths, where Kraid sits in the background and attacks the stage, making it rotate wildly. Or Mute City, where you move along a track and F-Zero racers try to periodically run you down. While most stages do feature some type of dynamic element, there are also a number of much more traditional Smash Bros. stages, which let you duke it out without interruption. Whichever type you prefer, Melee has you covered. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about game modes. First off, the single player mode has been increased exponentially. While you can still participate in an arcade-style gauntlet, now called Classic Mode, the developers have added Adventure Mode, All-Star Mode, Event Matches, and a Stadium feature. Adventure Mode is likely the first thing that you will play in single player. It contains a series of unique stages based upon different Nintendo series, and at times is more like a platformer than a fighting game. It even features some small cutscenes. While it's not something that I like to revisit, I think Adventure Mode was a great addition to the series, which added some much-needed variety to the single player mode and it's definitely worth a few playthroughs. Also mode is much simpler than adventure mode, but still a lot of fun. Based upon the arena from Kirby Superstar, the player must fight and defeat every single character in the game without dying. This is made more difficult because your percentage meter doesn't automatically reset to zero. It stays the same from battle to battle. To offset this difficulty, after each match you return to a rest area which features free heart container recovery items, which the player must rush and out. All-Star Mode is a fun test of a player's skill and endurance, and is something that I found very replayable. Event matches are possibly the largest addition to single player. You must fight your way through 51 unique, strange, and sometimes incredibly difficult battles. These can be anything from collecting coins, fighting 120 tiny Marios, and even fighting Master Hand and his brother Crazy Hand. I think the event matches were a great idea, but they're incredibly inconsistent. One match will be effortless to complete, and then the next will be soul-crushingly difficult. Still, if you're up to the challenge, you can spend plenty of time here. Finally, we have Stadium Mode. This contains a series of mini-games that the player can compete in. First we have Target Test, which returns from the original Super Smash Bros, but redesigned and more varied. Next we have Home Run Contest, where the player attempts to hit poor old sandbag as far as possible. Finally, we have Multi-Man Melee, a truly devilish concoction where you can choose to fight 10 enemies, 100 enemies, fight enemies continuously for up to 15 minutes, or fight insanely powerful foes which have no end. While they're not huge additions, the stadium mode does add some bonus content for players to tackle. So as you can see, the single player got a huge boost, but what about the multiplayer, which was already pretty robust on the N64? Well, all the options from the original game are still available, but some new features have been added. First up is the tournament mode, which pits players against each other in turns, and allows for up to 64 participants. Next is Special Melee, in which players can participate in a number of unique battle types, such as Giant Melee where everyone is huge, a Slow Mo Melee where everything moves in slow motion, or a Fixed Camera Melee where the camera doesn't scroll or follow the players. Melee also allowed the player to set custom rules, expanding on the settings menu of the original. 
One last small but very welcome addition also allowed players to input their own names, which would appear above their characters. Multiplayer overall remained much the same, but the increased number of options, characters, stages, items and modes made it very difficult to get bored. Without a doubt, this is the definitive multiplayer game for the GameCube. One final addition to Super Smash Bros. Melee was the trophy system. Throughout the game, the player can find trophies which feature hundreds of different people, places and items from all over Nintendo history. This is a fantastic addition to a game that is essentially a celebration of Nintendo, and collecting all of the trophies is quite a feat. So with the gameplay out of the way, what about the presentation? Whereas the original Super Smash Bros. simply mimicked the appearance of Nintendo characters from their respective N64 games, Melee had no base to work off. The GameCube was new, and series like Zelda were getting a radically different visual style. Because of this, Melee decided to do its own thing, and chose a surprisingly realistic visual style. To me, it's always looked a little bit darker and less colourful than the other games in the series, and while I understand that the developers wanted to show off the power of the GameCube, I don't think that this was necessarily the best direction for the game to go in. Despite this, it runs at a silky smooth frame rate, features some very nice particle effects, and it's fantastic to see some of the different characters and locations rendered in 3D on the GameCube. It looks good, and runs very well. I just think the art style is a bit of a mismatch. And now we come to the music. Super Smash Bros. Melee has a fantastic soundtrack, featuring fully orchestrated versions of compositions found throughout Nintendo history. It's always important for a fighting game to have good music, because you'll be hearing the same tracks a lot. I can safely say that you won't ever get tired of Melee's soundtrack, no matter how many dozens or even hundreds of hours you put into the game. Super Smash Bros. Melee is the most finely tuned game in the series. It controls perfectly and gives the player a wide array of techniques, attacks, dodges and cancels. If you're a hardcore fighting game fan, this is the Smash Brothers to get. But even if you're not, Melee retains the accessibility of the original game, and allows just about anyone to enjoy a multiplayer match or 10. And if you've only ever played Brawl but want to try out some of the older games in the series, I think you'll find Melee much easier to enjoy than the original N64 outing. Regardless of who you are, if you're looking for a great fighting game on the GameCube, look no further.